Welcome to Lifehouse Church, everybody. Great to be with you once again. And from wherever you are watching around the world, or you may be local, we just want to welcome you and thank you for being a part of this church service. I pray you, go, you guys are going to get a lot out of this message. We are starting uh, our series leading into Christmas called The Thrill of Hope. And, uh, you know, which is an interesting title, isn't it? You know, like The Thrill of Hope? Like you, the words thrill and hope you probably wouldn't normally put together. But it's been taken from the, uh, the very popular uh, carol, O Holy Night, and, and it says, you know, the thrill of hope, a, a weary world rejoices that Jesus himself was born. And you know what? I've noticed that around the world, um, just as we have, we've titled this Christmas season um, and our series, The Thrill of Hope, um, there have been churches all over the world that have done the same thing. I've never seen anything like it. Why? I honestly believe Holy Spirit is saying to every pastor out there, guys, please breathe hope. Now, whether a church has or they haven't, I still believe pastors are bringing hope no matter what. But I know that for myself and for Helen, as we were praying, you know, we just really believe that everyone needs a bit, bit more hope. And so that's where, that's where we've got the title from. And that's what we're going to be speaking into. You know, if there's one thing about Christmas is that it shouts out hope. Jesus being born into a dark and desperate and uh, purposeless world. He comes in and he completely changes everything. And our world is a different place because of that incredible event. But you know, here's a statement for you. You know, when you lose hope, friends, it changes everything. You know, when a couple say to me, when one of the, of, of the two people say to me, you know, Pastor Richard, I've just lost hope in our relationship. Friends, that relationship is pretty much over. When you believe that the future is darker than your current present, uh, friends, I'm telling you right now, you're, you're in danger. But I'm here to tell you, friends, that's not God's plan for us to be thinking that the future is darker than our present. There's no doubt about it. When a business owner feels that they uh, that tomorrow is going to be darker than today, friends, that's someone that we would say has lost hope. They are, they are living a life of hopelessness, and we don't want to be in that place. Now, listen, this word hope is so important that we find it 180 times in the Bible. But I would also say that many of us, although it is such an important concept in the Bible, most of us have a, a bad concept of what the word hope actually means. And if you're anyone like me, uh, we, we would make statements like, you know, I hope tomorrow is going to be a sunny day. We would make statements like that. Or I hope I can remember the words to the song. Or I hope Richard remembers to pick up the kids. And what we really mean is it doesn't seem likely and I'm not really confident it's going to happen, but this is my desire. That's what we usually mean by the word hope. Um, in other words, there's a huge chance it's not going to work out, but wow, I wish it was this way or that way. And our society's definition of hope is it's a wishy-washy, maybe, or a kind of unsure optimism. That's what hope usually means to people. Uh, but it's got no real assurance of getting your desire. Now, let's compare that to what the Bible says about the word hope. Because we find it in the Hebrew and we also find it in the Greek. And the word hope translated over and over again is translated as this. A strong and confident expectation of good. Wow! A strong and confident expectation of good. See, a lot of us do when we use the word hope, it's a strong and confident expectation, but sometimes it's like of the bad. You're hoping the bad doesn't happen. It's not a confident expectation of the good. So now when we read that word hope in different passages of the Bible, which I'm going to do in a moment, man, it changes everything. It says, what's this? Um, Jeremiah 29, 11, such a, a familiar verse to all of us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They're plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope, translated, a strong and confident expectation of good. That's what God's trying to bring us into, he's trying to bring into our world. Why? He says, to give you a future. Friends, without hope, it affects our future. And that's why we've titled this whole uh, series, and especially this message, 
Friends, we want to understand what hope is because it's what God is trying to bring into your world. We see King David who experienced so many challenges in life. Although he was a king, he was still weeping over many betrayals and things that, that he, he didn't see come to pass in his own life. And so he's talking to himself, which is what we need to do sometimes. And he says, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And what's this. He says, put your hope. What is that? A strong and confident expectation of good. He says, put your hope in God. He's saying that we're supposed to have an expectation of good because God is still in control. He's in control of our lives. He says, for yet I will praise him, my Savior and my God. That's Psalm 42, verse 11. So why? Why, why, why are we talking about hope? What's, what, what's it going to do? What's it going to bring? Well, friends, as I think about it and when, as I think about our church and I think about people all over the world in actual fact, you know what? There's no doubt about it. Isaiah 40, 31. We've heard this many times before, but it's going to have a whole new context. It says, but those who hope, so here's the word again, a strong and confident expectation of good. It says those people that are doing that in the Lord are going to renew their strength. Does anybody need some renewed strength? I don't know about you, but I certainly do. I need renewed strength. I need renewed vision. I need renewed passion. I need renewed everything. This season has sapped the life out of me. I'll be, I'm going to be honest about that. But that's okay because God says, if you will put your hope in me, Richard, about the future, a strong and confident expectation of good, if you stop believing what the media says, stop believing what even you're saying to yourself, if you start believing that I'm in control and I am God and I'm going to be bringing good things into your world, friends, that's what hope is. And when you start thinking of hope like that, then you can put the word thrill in front of it. Yes, that's thrilling. God, what are you going to do tomorrow? God, things are going to, things are going to get brighter. I wonder what God's going to bring. Friends, that's what this verse is saying. It says you're going to renew your strength and you're going to soar on the wings of eagles. I wouldn't mind just soaring in a plane actually right now. And, and they will run and you won't grow weary and you're going to walk and you're not going to be faint. Come on, all of us have a need for a little bit of that. Don't let 2020 dash your expectations, friends. You know, for a lot of people, you've just completely abandoned expectation. And I completely understand why. But come on, let's get our hope back on in the way God wants us to do it. Powerful things happen when we reset our expectation. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I'm, I'm going to give you a few scriptures today because you'll start to see that the word hope is just peppered throughout the whole Bible. And so here's Peter and he says, he says, All praise to God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And watch this. Now we live with great expectation. Hey, have you been born again? Have you allowed God into your life? Answer is yes, that's great. Do, do you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Yes, that's great. Well, then you're supposed to be someone, I'm supposed to be someone who's living with great expectation. So let me challenge you right now. Are you living with great expectation? I, maybe you say yes, but it's not expectation of good. It's expectation of bad. And friends, we just can't go down that road. No, we've got to make a decision because we've got to make some big plans for 2021. We've got to start setting up for an incredible year of harvest. Come on, guys. This is the plan of God for our lives. You know, I found an acrostic uh, recently, and it's the word hope. H-O-P-E. Have a look at this for the word hope. Have only positive expectations. Boom, I love that. Every time you say the word hope, that's what you're actually saying. Have only positive expectations. Many of us have heard the story of Peter and John going to the temple and they, they find a, a lame man sitting outside the gate and, uh, and, and, and the Bible says that they, that they looked at him and he was asking for money. And the Bible says that they both looked at him intently and they said silver and gold have we none now we all know that the man finds his healing and it was all because of the powerful name of Jesus and let's give all the credit and honor to the name of Jesus that can raise people up and 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 he was jumping and leaping and and I've preached many a sermon about it but you know something I've never noticed verse 5 says 
So he, that's the lame man, gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Now, we all know who's expecting money, but God gave him legs. You know what? Regardless, every miracle starts with an expectation. You don't accidentally get a miracle, friends. No, you, your, your expectation may have been so small. He just wanted a few dollars and God gave him legs. But it all started with expectation. So here it is for you, young couples. What are you expecting? Oh, we're just going to rent for you know, 50, 50 years because you know it's going to be hard to buy a house where we live. Well, if that's your expectation, friends, that's exactly what you're going to get. Now, why don't you just say, you know what, we're going to, we're going to expect to at least buy a unit. All of a sudden, you end up with this wonderful house that God does a miracle. Whether it's through family or whether it's through your promotion at work, I don't know how. But where's your expectation? What are you setting up for? Oh, I can't afford a car. I'm never going to be well. You know, I'll never run five kilometers. Why not? Why not just set your expectation that at least you can run a kilometer and get healthy and have a fit body and, and start fulfilling your dreams? Come on, is someone hearing me today? God wants us to reset our expectation. He was expecting a few dollars and he got some legs. I love that. You know what? For, for a lot of us, we're expecting God to do great things, but it's going to take a long time, obviously. It's, it's, it's going to take a long time obviously, Pastor Richard. And, you know, I understand that. You know, we often talk about the miracle of Jesus changing water into wine. You know, the, you know, the reality is, you know, God today is changing water into wine. He does it every day. Water, rain falls on fields right across the earth where there's vineyards. And those, the, the ground soaks up the water. It goes up through the vine eventually becomes a grape. Someone picks the grape, they squash it, it ferments, it becomes wine. God is still changing water into wine today. So what's, what's so miraculous about what Jesus did? Well, he did it quickly. And you know what? Some of you are thinking, well, it's gonna, you know, it's step one and then it's gonna be step two. And you know, I'm sure God will do something for us eventually. No, why can't God do something for you quickly? What's your expectation? What's your expectation today? Friends, God wants to reset it because that's what the word hope means. It's a strong and it's a confident expectation of good. And someone needs to be saying amen out there somewhere. I, I believe this with all my heart. You know, the, we, we hear a lot about Abraham and how he was waiting for a long time to have a child of promise. God had said, I'm going to give you a child. And, and the Bible says that, you know, he, he had his moments where he wavered and then he said to his wife, well, maybe I should just go with this servant girl. Actually, she told him, why don't you go with the servant girl? And then eventually he had a child with a servant girl. But you know, Romans chapter four, verse 18 says, it says against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Now wait for it, just as had been said to him. Friends, I'm not, a tell I'm not telling you to have expectations for things that God has not said could happen or will happen. Now, I'm talking about us reading the word of God. And when God says that he wants to do something in your life, do you have an expectation that if God said it, then God can do it? Is that your expectation or is it like, yeah, I know that you said that, God, but you know, I'm not really sure because you know, I'm not really good enough and I didn't grow up on the right side of the tracks and I'm not very intelligent. Friends, it doesn't, that's not the qualification. Jesus actually said this to, his, to the people that needed a miracle one day. He said, according to to your faith. And I'm going to say to you today, it's according to your expectation, friends. If that's what you're expecting, you get nothing. No, no, we need to take God's word and if God has said it and if he has written it down, then we can believe him for it. So here's the question again. How's your expectations going? What are you expecting for 2021? Well, it's going to be a slow year and things are going to take forever to get going. Well, you know what? I know some people that are not believing that and they are flourishing. Well, it's going to be tough and, you know, it's going to be hard. I'm, I've got social anxiety now and it's going to take me a few years before I can adjust again. Well, if that's your expectation, that's exactly what you're going to be. Some people are saying, you know what? I'm shaking this thing off. I'm going to get back to who I was and what I was doing and I'm going to be the life of the party or whatever it is. Friends, it's all according to your strong and confident expectation. What are you expecting from God? I'm, I'm, I'm just banging the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to harass you today. Because I want you to step up to what God has got for us. This is what we're supposed to be living. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The Apostle Paul says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, 
nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. What's it saying? You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't heard anything yet. Oh, I've heard everything. No, you haven't. God's got more. He wants you to see more. He wants to do more through you. Friends, you are not at the peak of your life. There's more to come. But it all is based on your confident expectation of good. Is that your confident expectation? Is it for good? Friends, I know this is going to sound weird, but you know, God's not focused on your past. That's actually completely forgiven. And most people say, yeah, I get that, I get that. But friends, God's not overly interested even in your present. Oh, that's a bit controversial. Well, well, because we're already here. We're already here, like right now, like this is the present right now. So whatever has happened, has happened. And now the present has now become the past. And uh, I've just wasted a few minutes here right now with you. No, no, let me tell you what God is always focused on, your future. And he can't talk about your future if what you're thinking about it is negative. If you're, how can God be involved in your future if you're not even expecting good things to happen? No, God needs you believing. He needs you out there. Psalm, Psalm um, 5 verse 3. I love this. Ooh, here we go. We're warming up now. Some, oh, Pastor Richard, really? The message is almost over. Yeah, I know, but I feel like we're just warming up right now. What's this. It says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. I love that. Now, what's he saying? Now, what's he praying? He says, in the morning, I lay my requests before you and I wait expectantly. What's he doing? He, what, his requests must be pretty awesome if he's waiting expectantly. Is that what you're doing? Is that what I'm doing? Are we laying our requests waiting expectantly? Or do we pray prayers and then the very moment we finish that prayer, we go, yeah, but I don't think it'll happen. No, no, we can't be that person. No, no, we're going to pray big prayers and then we're going to be believing and waiting and we're going to be expecting God to do something. Do you remember the story of blind Bartimaeus? The Bible says that he heard Jesus was walking by and he began to call out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and everyone was telling him to be quiet, be quiet. Stop calling out on Jesus. Do you know in life there's going to always be people that as you begin to start to make a noise and as you start to talk about your dreams and your visions, and there's always going to be, but be quiet. Stop talking so positively. Friends, don't listen to those people. No, no, you decide that, you know what, I'm going to call out. I need a miracle from Jesus and if he's around, I'm going to call out on him. And you, you be that person. So blind Barnabas started calling out and all the disciples, be quiet, be quiet. And Jesus goes, you know what, tell him to come to me. And so he runs over and this is, this is so powerful. It says, Bartimaeus, this is... Mark chapter 10, verse 50. It says, Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. And you're thinking, what's so wild about that? This guy was blind, guys, which means he couldn't work. And that coat that he had, it probably would have been his blanket. It would have been his mat. It would have been the very thing that kept him warm at night. Like he needed that coat. And people would have come along and stolen that thing in a heartbeat. Why was he confident to just throw it aside and jump up after Jesus? Because he was confident that he was not going to need that jacket anymore. He knew that he was going to run to Jesus, get his eyesight, and then from there he'll go get a job and life will return to some normality for him and he will move forward in life. He didn't need that anymore. He threw his coat aside. Isn't that a, an amazing point? You know what that tells me? Expectations without actions are dead. And I know we've all heard this, the statement, faith without works is dead, and it's absolutely true. But I'm telling you right now, you can have all the expectations in the world, but if you don't have some actions behind your expectations, friends, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's pretty much dead. He believed he didn't need that anymore. Let me give you an example. Believing that you're going to get a job without putting in your resume is not a strong and confident expectation of good. Are you hearing me? Like, how are you meant to get a job if you're not going about putting some resumes in and creating the best one you can actually put together? Now, people want some good things to happen, but they don't want to do anything. No, no. Expectations always has actions. If you believe God's going to do something for you, then friends, we start doing things that help that expectation. You know, believing you're going to lose some weight, but not getting rid of the chocolate in the bottom drawer. Hey, listen, let me tell you, that's not confident expectations. 
That's just pipe dream stuff. No, no, we've got to do what we can do so that the expectation can come to pass. You know, believing for Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, but you're still dating Mr. or Mrs. Wrong, that's not a confident expectation of good. If you're believing that's what God's going to bring into your world, why are you still with this guy? If you're honestly, I believe God's going to bring the right girl into my life, what are you doing with her? You've got no intention of marrying her. Things aren't working out. All you do is argue all day anyway. You're believing for someone. Why wouldn't you just bring that to an end, believing that God's bringing the right thing into your life? Blind Bartimaeus, I don't need this anymore. Got rid of it and got his eyesight back. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Come on, confident expectation of good. And some of you are saying, man, you had to go and start messing with my life, eh? I'm sorry, guys. But we like to keep it real here. Come on, you've got to step out. If you want to get that miracle, friends, you know, expectations are great, but it's always going to demand something of, you know, Peter can't walk on water and be in the boat at the same time. It's one or the other, friends. Are you in the boat? Are you in the boat at the moment of, yeah, we'll see how we go and we'll see what life's going to bring. No, well, that means you're going to be tossed about by the winds of life. No, no. I like the people that say, you know what? I don't care what's going on around me, but that's where I am headed. Now, we all know that life is going to constantly throw curveballs. And I mean, this sounds like a great message, but lots of people have had their expectations shattered in life. And I get that. I'm not, I'm not naive to that. I've obviously experienced that myself. But friends, that's my point. Disappointment will often bring about a life with no expectations. Actually, if you get on Google and type in expectation quotes, 99.9 of them are about don't have any expectations and you'll never be disappointed. What a way to live life. What a shallow, bottom-of-the-barrel life that is. No, I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't want to live like that. That doesn't put a smile on my face, bottom-of-the-barrel living. No, someone else can live like that. That's not us. If you've tuned in today, God is speaking to all of us today. He's saying, come on, guys, I need you to have a strong and confident expectation of good. Anybody with me? Hey, I'll tell you what. If anybody, if anybody could talk about shattered expectations, it would be the Apostle Paul. I mean, he, he, he actually has this encounter with Jesus. He knocks him off his horse. Paul, I've got these great plans for you. You're going you're gonna to reach the Gentile world. You're going you're gonna to change the world, Paul. Well, lo and behold, the guy ends up in jail. And he's there for a long time, friends. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, let's just read this for a moment. He says, he says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. He's talking about being delivered from jail, right? Through your prayer and the, and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, watch this. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. What's he saying? Guys, I'm believing for this. I'm believing. But no matter what happens, I believe God's in control. If I die, what can I do? It was God's plan and it's okay. At least I know I'm in God's will. But he's, there's no pessimism in that. What he's saying is I either win or I win. Sorry. That's what he's saying. But he's got an earnest expectation. Did you get that? He's still got an earnest expectation. But no matter what happens, God's in it. And my life is in God's hands. And friends, no matter what happens, you've got to understand you're in God's hands. But he still demands that you have an earnest expectation. That's not an excuse to go, well, whatever's going to happen, it's just going to happen. And why have an expectation? Because God's will is still going to... Well, that No, apparently not. Apparently, because when God does want to bring great things into your world, and when he is trying to fulfill your desires, it only happens because you've got that great expectation going on. Are you hearing what I'm saying, friends? You know, I think a great example of this, and I'm going to finish with this, is Joseph, the biblical character Joseph. You know, he gets this vision from God that one day he's going to be ruling and reigning and his own family are going to be bowing before him. And, and so he tells his family and they don't take it very well and they end up selling him and, and they throw him into a pit. Do you know, at that moment, he could have thought, expectations, hey? Don't worry about that. Dreams, hey? Yeah, don't worry about that. Look, here I am in a pit. But you don't read him saying that. He actually just goes with the flow. Now, I don't believe he was popping champagne and blowing horns and wearing party hats, but 
Hear, hear what I'm saying here. He somehow still had the great expectation and just believed that he was still in God's plan. Now, let me just talk right down the barrel of this camera to just say, guys, I know that you've been through some really tough things and you had some dreams in your relationships, dreams for your finances, dreams. I, I, I get it. But friends, it's no excuse just because you've had a shattered past to let go of your expectations. I know you, it's comfortable to do that, but it's not the plan of God. And then poor Joseph eventually finds himself at Potiphar's house and starts prospering. Things are going well again. Come on, we have those moments. It's like, oh, I get it. I'm going to rule this guy's household, right? And then he gets accused of rape. Boom, again, shattered expectations, shattered dreams. But again, you don't read anywhere that he just lets it go. In actual fact, he resists uh, sleeping with Potiphar's wife because he says, hey, I can't do that because God's watching. See, the whole time he believed that God was watching, even through the trauma of everything he was going through and the trials, he still believed, I can't do that because God's watching. Is that, is that your expectation? That even though when you go through tough times, hey, I know God's still watching though. You had a marriage breakup. Yeah, it's horrible. But God is still involved in my life. Friends, he is. He actually still is involved in your life. And now we need you to pick up your expectation. Well, eventually he ends up at, Potiphar, uh, at, at Pharaoh's dungeon. And again, he's down there and he's just forgotten and he, he interprets someone's dream and they forget about him and he's just there. But you know what? On Tuesday night, he was sleeping in the prison. And on Wednesday night, he was the second in charge of all of Egypt. Friends, not once do you read about him disregarding his expectation. And can I just challenge you right now? I don't know where you're at. Maybe life has been awesome. Maybe life has been tragic. I don't know where you're at. But one thing I do know is that it is God's will that we would be filled with hope. What is it again? It's a strong like it's powerful, it's not this weak, wishy-washy thing. And it's a confident expectation of good for your future. Guys, that's God's will for our life. Maybe you're watching for the very first time and you're thinking, wow, yeah, I need, I need a bit of confident expectation in my life. Well, friend, it all starts with having the expectation and the confidence of knowing that no matter what happens to you, you've got a relationship with God. That if something was to happen to you, you know where you're going. You know who rules your life. Not this, gee, if I was to die today, I don't know where I'm going. Friends, it all starts with a relationship with Jesus. And can I encourage you? It's so easy to have. Just humble yourself. Jesus, I really need you in my life. Please come, forgive me of all my sin. And he will come, friends. He will, he will do that. And then from there, you'll begin to start, you, you will start to feel a hope rising inside of you. That's what the Apostle Peter was talking about. There's a hope. Once, once you become born again, once your life restarts, there's a hope that comes. And he wants you to stay in that hope all the way until we are out of this place called earth. Friends, that's God's will for your life. And as for the rest of us, come on, guys, let's reset our hope. Let's believe that God is in this thing and we are going to march into 2021 vibrant, alive, soaring on eagles' wings in Jesus' name. Amen. Great to be with you guys. Have an amazing day.